समाचार पाठ लिया गया है संत योना का सुसमाचार उसका पहला अध्याय 35 आयत से 42 आयत तक गॉस्पिल अकॉर्डिंग टू सेंट जॉन चैप्टर वन वर्सेस 35 फाइव टू फोर्टी टू जब सुसमाचार पाठ पढ़ा जाता है तो मेहरबानी से हम अपने स्थान पर खड़े हो जाएं। 
यहां इस प्रकार से लिखा गया है दूसरे दिन फिर योहन्ना और उसके चेलों में से दो जन खड़े हुए थे और उसने ईशु पर जो जा रहा था दृष्टि करके कहा देखो ये परमेश्वर का मेमना है तब वे दोनों चेले उसकी यह सुनकर ईशु के पीछे हो लिए ईशु ने मुड़कर उनको पीछे आते देखा और उनसे कहा तुम किसकी खोज में हो उन्होंने कहा हे रबी अर्थात हे गुरु तू कहा रहता है उसने उनसे कहा चलो तो देख लोगे तब उन्होंने जाकर उसके रहने का स्थान देखा और उस दिन उसके साथ रहे यह दसवें घंटे के लगभग था उन दोनों में से जो योहन्ना की बात सुनकर ईशु के पीछे हो लिए थे एक शमौन पत्रस का भाई आंद्रियास था उसने पहले अपने सगे भाई शमौन से मिलकर उससे कहा हमको क्रिस्त अर्थात मसीह मिल गया वह उसे ईशु के पास लाया ईशु ने उस पर दृष्टि करके कहा तू योहन्ना का पुत्र शमौन है तू कैफा अर्थात पत्रस कहलाएगा ये प्रभु ईशु का सुसमाचार है आय मसीह तेरी तमजीद हो
banco merende no gau mete Praise the Lord. We have gathered here once again this evening to study from the Word of God from John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verses 35 to 45. John's Gospel 1, 35 to 45. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Loving Heavenly Father, we come into your presence, thanking you and praising you once again for every opportunity you provide for us, Father, where we can come together to understand more and more about you, Lord, for the kind, loving, compassionate Father that you are, Heavenly Father. And Father, as we commit this evening into your loving care, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable to you. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. You have all heard the scripture reading. That is John 1, 35 to 42. Uh, very quickly, I will just uh, broadly uh, outline what we have read. Uh, today's passage, that, that is from 35 to 42, I have taken into two parts. First part I have taken from uh, 35 to 39. And so we'll reflect on that. We will study from there. And then we will do the remaining two verses, uh, 40, uh, three rather, 40 to 42. Now, from 35 to 39, what we have seen is, uh, I'll quickly go over it. On the next day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. John looked at Jesus as he walked. See, he said, the Lamb of God and the two disciples heard him speaking and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him. What are you looking for? He said to them, Rabbi, the word means teacher. They said to him, where are you staying? He said to them, come and see. They came and saw where he was staying and they stayed with him throughout that day and it was about four o'clock in the afternoon. What is so striking about this passage is a couple of these uh, sentences or the statements that uh, the, the disciples made, um, Jesus' answer and above it all, who is bringing forth this passage is John the Baptist. Now we all know that John the Baptist has been the forerunner of Christ. He was deputed to announce the coming of uh, Jesus. And so what we see in this passage, once again, that John the Baptist, as the forerunner of Jesus, he uh, again is pointing to Jesus beyond himself. He must have known very well that to speak to his disciples about Jesus like that was to invite them to leave him and transfer their loyalty to this new and greater teacher. And yet he did it. And so what do we notice? That there was no jealousy in John. He had come to attach men, not to himself, but to Christ. There is no harder task than to take the second place when once the, uh, um, when once the first place was enjoyed. Now, John the Baptist was a man in the wilderness. wilderness. He was speaking about God. Uh, he was talking about coming of the Messiah. And so he was number one at that time. But now... Uh, when Jesus is uh, coming, John is shifting the focus of people from himself to Jesus, which means he is stepping down from that position and he's now becoming number two, which is a great uh, sign of humility. Um, as soon as Jesus emerged on the scene, John never had any thought than to send men to him. So the two disciples of John followed Jesus. It may well be that they were too shy to approach him directly and followed respectfully some distance behind. Then Jesus did something entirely characteristic. He turned and he spoke to them. That is to say, he met them halfway. He made things easier for them. He opened the door they might come in. Imagine ourselves in the place of these two disciples when, when we are seeking him and Jesus turns and talks to us. Wow. Here we have the symbol of divine initiator. It is always God who takes the first step. When the human mind begins to seek and the human heart begins to long, God comes to meet us far more than halfway. God does not leave a man to search and search until he comes to him. God goes out to meet the man. When we go to God, we do not go to one who hides himself and keeps us at a distance. We go to one who stands waiting for us. The one who takes initiative by coming to meet us on the road. What a great and mighty Lord we serve. Now then, Jesus began by asking these two men the most fundamental question in life. What are you looking for? Now, if we go back to that time in Jerusalem, uh, in Palestine, it was a very relevant question. Were the legalists looking only for subtle conversations about the little details of the law like the scribes and Pharisees? What are you looking for? Were they ambitious time servers looking for positions and power like the Sadducees? Were they nationalists? We're talking about these two disciples. Were they nationalists looking for a political demagogue and a military commander who would smash the occupying power of Rome like the zealots? 
over the humble men of prayer looking for God and for His will, like the quiet in the land. Over the simply puzzled, bewildered, sinful men looking for light on the road of life and forgiveness from God. It would be well if every now and again we were to ask ourselves, what am I looking for? Very profound meaning this little paragraph where the two disciples begin to follow Jesus. Jesus turns around and asks them, what are you looking for? Imagine how important this passage becomes when we ask this of ourselves, what am I looking for? What's my aim and goal? What am I really trying to get out of life? In this pandemic time, we have asked ourselves this question so many times. What are we looking for? Some of us are looking for security. We are searching for security. Looking for position which is safe. Money enough to meet the needs of life and to put some past for the time when work is done. A material security which will take away the essential worry about material things. This is not a wrong aim, but it is a low aim. As children of God, we have a higher calling. So by asking ourselves of these questions, what are we looking for? There is no safe security in the chances and the changes of this life. Some of us are searching for what they would call a career, for power, for prominence, for prestige for a place to fit the talents and the abilities they believe themselves to have, for an opportunity to do the work they believe themselves capable of doing. If this be directed by motives of personal ambition, it can be a bad aim. If it be directed by motives of the service of our fellow men, it can be a high aim. But it is not enough, for its horizon is limited by time and by the world. Since we have a higher calling, what do we do? We look to the Lord in prayer. Some are searching for some kind of peace, for something to enable them to live at peace with themselves and at peace with God and at peace with men. This is a search for God. This aim only Jesus Christ can meet and supply. Now the answer of John's disciple was that they wished to know where Jesus stayed. They called him Rabbi. That is a Hebrew word which literally means my great one. It was a title of respect given by students and seekers after knowledge to their teachers and to wise men. It was not mere curiosity which made these two ask this question. What they meant was that they did not wish to speak to Jesus only on the road. They wished to linger on, linger long with him and talk their problems and their troubles. Don't we sometimes seek some somebody who's knowledgeable, elderly, um, and we go to that person as stand and um, seek a longer time and then says, when are you free, we'll come and meet you or you come over. The man who would be Jesus' disciple can never be satisfied with the passing word. He wants to meet Jesus, not as an acquaintance in the passing, but as a friend in his own house. And Jesus' answer was, come and see. When Jesus said, come and see, he was inviting them not only to come and talk, but to come and find the things that he alone could open out to them. And so my dear brothers and sisters, my dear children, Jesus is inviting us. He is more than willing to meet us halfway. Are we ready to invite him into our lives? There's a very profound meaning in this uh, simple passage. Let's go on to the next three verses, that is from 39 to 42, where Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, was one of the two who had heard John speaking about Jesus and who had followed him. Now, remember, when we began uh, this Bible study, I told you that John the Baptist, um, who was a forerunner for Christ um, and who was announcing coming of Jesus, he is now willing to take the second place, pointing people to Jesus now. Okay? And now here, so so here are people who are willing to take a second uh, place in, uh, in the re realms of life because they want to give Jesus the first place. So that was that passage. And now we are here. We are talking about Andrew. Another person we are talking about is Andrew. He's not mentioned too many times or he doesn't have too much of limelight on him as John. And Jesus' brother John, um, 
and uh, so many other uh, disciples and the the gospels are written by matthew mark luke um, so let's see what jesus is trying to tell us through this also let's try and understand this passage also as written by john andrew simon peter's brother was one of the two who had heard john speaking about jesus and who had followed him first thing in the morning he went and found his own brother simon we found the messiah he said to him the word messiah means the same as the word christ he brought him to jesus jesus looked intent jesus looked intently at him you are simon jonah's son he replied you will be called cephas and cephas is the same name as peter that means a rock now andrew first found his brother simon in our translation we have taken the second reading because it suits better the story of the first moment to speak in jesus' life to regard this event as taking place on the next day again john explains a hebrew word in order to help his greek readers to understand better messiah and christ are the same word both mean anointed we do not possess a great deal of information about andrew as i said earlier but even the little that we know perfectly paints his character he is one of the most attractive men in the apostolic band and he has two outstanding characteristics and i want to bring them both before you andrew was char- characteristically the man who was prepared to take the second place again and again he is Id- identifies as simon peter's brother wherever he goes simon peter's brother it is clear that he lived under the shadow of peter people might not know who andrew was but everybody knew peter and when men spoke of andrew they always described him as peter's brother andrew was one of the inner circle of the disciples when jesus healed jairus's daughter when he went up to the mount of transfiguration when he underwent his temptation in gethsemane it was peter james and john whom he took with him it would have been so easy for andrew to resent this was he not one of the first two disciples who ever followed jesus but still andrew was quite content to stand back and let his brother have the limelight he was quite content to play a humble part in the company of the 12 to andrew matters of precedence and place and honor mattered nothing at all andrew is the patron saint of all who humbly and loyally and ungrudgingly take the second place aren't we all fighting for the first place we want to rise to the top we want to gain uh, positions but if we look at the life of andrew very meaningful life he led but yet he allowed his brother to take to take the limelight and he was always at the back seat humble but yet he is mentioned in the bible second characteristic of andrew first is that he ungrudgingly humbly and loyally took the second place second characteristic let's look at it andrew is char- characteristically the man who was always introducing others to Jesus that means he played a very profound role of leading people to Jesus just like John the Baptist there are only three times in the gospel story when andrew is brought into the center of the stage there is this incident here in which he brings peter to jesus we just talked about talked about it and there is the incident in john 6 verses 8 to 9 when he brings everybody knows the story when he brings to jesus the boy with the five loaves and two small fishes and there is the incident in john 12:22 when he brings the enquiring greeks into the presence of jesus it was andrew's great joy to bring others to jesus he stands out as a man whose one desire was to share his glory he is a man with the missionary heart having himself found the friendship of jesus he spent all his life introducing others to that friendship andrew is a great example in that he could could not keep jesus to himself when andrew brought peter the second part of this paragraph when andrew brought peter to jesus jesus looked at peter now that look describes a concentrated intent gaze the gaze which um, does not only see the superficial things that lie on the surface but which reads a man's heart when jesus saw simon as he was then called he said to him your name is simon but you are going to be called cephas which means a rock 
Now, in the Old Testament, a change of name often denoted a new relationship with God. Do you remember the Old Testament? Jacob became Israel. Abraham became Abraham. And they entered a new relationship with God. Peter became, uh, uh, sorry, um, Simon became Cephas the rock. When a man enters into a new relationship with God, it is as if life begins all over again and he becomes a new man. So, so then he needs a new name. But the great thing about this story is that it tells us how Jesus looks at men, looks at you, looks at me. He does not only see what a man is or a woman is or a child is, he also sees what a man can become. He sees what you and I he, he sees uh, not in you and I the actuality, actualities, he also sees the possibilities. Jesus looked at Peter and saw in him not only a Galilean fisherman, but one who had it in him to become the rock on which his church would be built. Jesus sees us not only as we are, but as we can be. And he says, give your life to me and I will make you what you have it in you. May your lives and our lives be touched um, so closely by the Lord Jesus that he looks at me and tells me, my child, I will give you what I think is the best for you. So may we have that patience and may we uh, wait on the Lord and help him guide us. Shall we pray? Loving Heavenly Father, as you bring the word to us, uh, help us, Lord, to be patient and to wait on you and not to be stressful, and not to be anxious about anything, Heavenly Father. Even though this pandemic may have, the, may have taken the toll on us, Lord, but we wait on you for, because what you have planned for us is the best plan, as you have said in Jeremiah 20, uh, 9, 11, Heavenly Father. You have the best plans for us. Lord, help us to be patient and to follow you. Open our hearts to you so that you come and meet us halfway. Bless each one, Heavenly Father, who has been part of this Bible study. And those who have not been able to be the part of this Bible study, we pray, Lord, that the portion may reach them, Father. Bless us all and help us to become forbearers for you. Help us, Father, to bring our friends to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you and have a blessed evening.
जो सारी समझ से परे है परमेश्वर के और उसके पुत्र हमारे प्रभु यीशु मसीह के ज्ञान और प्रेम में आपके हृदय और विचारों को सुरक्षित रखे एंड दिंग ऑफ गॉड ऑल माइटी द फादर द सन एंड द होली स्पिरिट बी अमंग यू एंड रिमेन विद यू ऑल